Week number five of 260 Minutes is the first one that I've performed out of town. I'm here at the Edmonton Yak Yaks. I'm uh, hoping that tonight's set goes well. Well, I guess I, I always hope that the sets go well. Uh, the new stuff today, though, that I'm plunking into the uh, uh, my regular middle set is uh, the first half might come off a little bit hateful, so I'm hoping that by that point in my show they'll be on board enough that they won't turn on me. But there's only one way to find out. Let's see what happens. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to start with uh, the story. I was in Saskatoon recently, and I am bragging. And uh, I, was outside this, uh, I was outside this little diner, and there was a, a husky, a beautiful husky dog in this BMW sitting behind the wheel of the car. You know, like one of those, oh, he thinks he's people moments, which is always fun. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm looking at this dog, and behind me, I hear this voice say, uh, would you please not stare at my dog? And I, I turn around expecting to see the owner of the dog, but actually just discover that there is a bridge missing a troll. Uh, yeah, it was this horrible woman. Like, I didn't... They say that, like, you look like your pet, right? Like, you buy a dog that looks like you. At which point, she really should have bought a pug with, like, a birth defect, you know? Like, she just... Just this horrible, horrible human being. She's about three feet high, six feet around. I, she, she looked like a grade one teacher that everybody hated. Like, you can just tell they put tacks on her chair and that sort of shit. Also, I, don't, I couldn't see her in the BMW. You know, like, 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 if your car resembled you, I pictured her more in, like, a big ball with some chin hairs on it. I know I'm hacking on her looks a lot here, but trust me, her personality was atrocious, too. Uh, so, she doesn't know. So, anyway, she says this, like, would you mind not staring at my dog? Uh, the transcript, I don't want to leave anything out, so here we go. Uh, I said, excuse me. Uh, she said, don't stare at my dog. It antagonizes him, and then he'll tear up the inside of my car. I said, uh, well, then you've done a shitty job raising him. Uh, dogs don't do that. You've raised a cat, is what you have in there. And she said, excuse me. And I say, good, good dogs don't do that. They're, they don't shit where they eat. Uh, she said, just don't stare at him. I said, uh, why did you bring him out in public then if he's so easily agitated? She said, excuse me. I said, seriously, why did you bring him out in public if you don't want people to, uh, to look at him? Uh, like, do you want people to look at you when you have the dog? And she's like, well, people do look at me. And I said, of course they do. They need to use the stars to calculate a plot uh, course around you. I, uh... She said, I just asked you to not look at my dog. I said, well, I want your car torn to shreds. It's not illegal to look at your dog. In fact, your dog is in your car in the summer. I could smash the window, liberate the dog. The cops wouldn't even show up. She said, of course they would. I said, fuck you and the horse your mom fucked. <laughs> now, all of that story is a lie <laughs> after the point that she said, please stop staring at my dog. I said, oh, sorry, I got it, and then I bowed away, slowly. Because <laughs> I, am, I am the definition of passive-aggressive. I've never been active-aggressive in my entire uh, adult life. I, uh, I never will be. Twitter is made for me. Like, Twitter is perfect, because I post my snide shit on there, and if somebody retweets it, I think I'm right. And if nobody retweets it, I think the internet is broken. That's, that's the ego on me, yeah. I tend not to date, no segue. I, uh, uh, the reason I don't date is because I never learned how to do that, like what the steps are involved in that. Because um, I spent most of my life doing this, basically. I never really learned how to do that stuff. So I'm now asking 20-year-olds for their advice on, uh, on dating. I'm like, oh, should we go to a movie? They're like, don't go to a movie. You want to get to know her. And I was like, oh, dating, you want to get to know them. Okay, good. I had no idea. I thought you were just sizing each other up to make sure that when you're naked, there's no big surprises. You're, you're just getting to look at each other from all the proper angles, you know? Uh, and, I, and I don't understand the stages of the relationship, like, like, like how, it, how it goes. Like, at what point do you tell them that you want to see their genitals? When does that happen? <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. That's how I would say it, too. I do know that the third date is when you're supposed to put the P in the V. I do know that. <laughs> but the only reason I know that is because of 90s sitcoms. Like, Frasier is where I learned that. <laughs> so I actually think it was a conspiracy by TV writers that were really good at getting a third date, but not a fourth. So they're like, hey, let's make every show about third date fucking. All right, let's do that. People always describe their like, perfect match. It's always the same person. Everybody's looking for the same guy or girl. Oh, I want him to be smart and funny and handsome and 
uh, make a lot of money. It's like they're, you know, like, and the opposite of that is never listed anywhere. Like I want them to be dumb and bitter and broke and an uggo. That's why my Plenty of Fish profile has not gotten any hits. I do want the same thing, but you know what? I've never dated a dumb, broke uh, uggo before. Uh, maybe I should try it. I guess what I'm saying is I really should have asked that girl out that drives the BMW. <laughs> and that was the new stuff. Thanks for listening. All right. That went okay. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> One person. That was all right. Cat porn somewhere. Like we've, we've survived that. Hey, that'd be kitty porn. You've got to pronounce that correctly. You have to articulate it or you get into trouble. Well, again, that went pretty well tonight. The, uh, the first half wasn't at all uh, too hateful. They came on board for the ride. I guess they uh, sympathized with my situation. And uh, the, uh, I, I gotta find endings for these things, because last couple of weeks they just faded out. I need to find a way to end on, a, on an actual punch versus just saying, oh, and it's, it's over, but I'll, uh, I'll work on that. I think the, uh, the first story's definitely uh, sticking around, the second one with some tweaks, maybe.